All right, in this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about a few more things here that pertain to rendering. Uh, we're going to go into another setup window. Um, so just bear with me here. We have to get this all out of the way, and you have to know where all these tools are and how they work in order to help you out for rendering uh, a little bit further down in the future. So let's go ahead and talk about environment and effects in 3ds Max. If we go back to the rendering menu, and we go down here, we'll see this environment, and we'll also see an effects menu. Essentially, these will open up the same menu window, so it doesn't really matter which one you choose. I'll just click on environment here, and you can see the shortcut is 8 on the keyboard. So when I open that up, it opens up the environment and effects window. We can see here we have a tab for effects, and on the left we have a tab for environment. So let's start off with environment first. We have a common parameters rollout. What the environment uh, tab allows you to do is set up different options for rendering out in terms of your environment. For example, if we go ahead and we do a shift Q to do a quick render here, we'll notice that the background of the render is now black. If we click on this color swatch, we can change the background color to say gray. Render that out and you'll see the background color changes to gray. Essentially, we can change the background color to whatever we want. I'll set it back to black. We can also plug in an environment map. Right now it's set to none by default. If we click on this button here, we can go ahead and choose different environment maps. You can choose procedural textures that come with 3ds Max, such as Checker, or Cellular, or pretty much any of these that you want. You can also choose Bitmap. What Bitmap will allow you to do is go into your hard drive and search for an actual image. Now the image could be, say, a background of a sky, or outer space, or whatever it is that you want for your project or your scene. So you can set something up like that and have a background image for your entire scene, which comes in very handy and very useful when setting up the environment for your project. Hence why this option is located in the environment and effects option window. So let me go ahead and set up a checker map here real quick. It's not going to look too good. I'll click OK. But just to give you the idea of what's going on here. So now you see I have a checker map and the background of my render. And if I want to get rid of it, I can right click on top of the map here and I can click on clear. So I'll clear that out and now if I render again you'll notice there's no more environment map. This checkbox here for use map simply tells uh, 3ds Max to render with the map or uncheck it to render without the map. Global lighting allows you to set up the ambient and global lighting in your scene. Over here we can set up a global lighting tint to whatever color we want. By default set the white but if I wanted to I can give everything a reddish tint so I can do that. If I hit render, you'll notice everything has this sort of reddish sunset looking tint. I can also control the level of the global lighting. Right now it's set to 1. I can increase that to blow it out of proportion. Now it's very, very bright. Or I could take it all the way down to 0. And if I render, I'll get a pitch black render simply because the global lighting's turned off and I don't have any lights in the scene. So we get a pitch black render. I'll set that back to the default, which was 1. And I'll set the global tint back to white and render that out again and we're back to square one. Over here we have ambient. If we click on that we can change the ambient light color of the ambient light. So I can set the ambient light to say green. Click OK. Render that out. And I'll get this sort of greenish hue on everything in the scene. So this allows you to change and alter those ambient colors in your scene. I'll set it down to black again. And there we go. Down here we have something called exposure control. What exposure control does, it allows you to control the final output of the image using different control, uh, different exposure control algorithms. We have different options here. By default, you'll set to have no exposure control. But if we go here to our drop down list, we can see we have quite a few different options. We have automatic exposure control, linear exposure control, and so on and so forth. Right now, exposure controls aren't going to make a lot of sense. But we are going to go ahead and get into exposure control once we start using photometric lights in, a in another video a little bit further down the road. Down here, we can click on render preview and we'll get a little preview of what it looks like, what the scene looks like uh, with the current exposure control. Right now we have no exposure control, so that's what the scene looks like. If I switch to say linear exposure control, I can render out a preview. You can see it brightens up the image. If I go over here to say logarithmic exposure control, I can see the render preview updates automatically and now it's much brighter and a little bit blown out. 
I can also choose different options down here based on the exposure control I'm using. So when I switch to logarithmic exposure control, I'll get this options parameter down here that allows me to control different things, such as the brightness, the contrast, midtones, the physical scale, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to no exposure control and continue moving on here. Atmosphere. The atmosphere allows us to add different atmosphere effects. For example, if I click on add, I can go ahead and choose different atmosphere effects that are available to me, like fire effects, fog, volume fog, and volume light. I'll go ahead and hit cancel. I'll go over here to the effects tab, and here this works similar to the atmosphere effects, where I can go ahead and click on add, and I can create different types of effects, say motion blur. Uh, depth of field effect or blur effect or lens effects different things like that and I can add them to this list and you'll see them actually uh, render out here in our viewport so let me go back here to environment and that's going to cover it up just a quick little uh, rundown of what this menu does and what's its purpose in 3ds Max and in, the, in your rendering workflow so let me close these windows down and that's going to do it for this video I'll see you in the next one where we'll continue working with rendering in 3ds Max.